Hey, Coach. Amy said I could sneak in two questions, so I'm going to do that. One at a time. One at a time. <laughs> um, just going into this game tonight after, you know, a, kind of an intense game yesterday, such a close game yesterday, second night of a back-to-back, -back, but you guys are relatively healthy, obviously, aside from uh, Pat Bev. Um, how do you go about finishing this road trip strong, ability to finish it four and two on the road? I'm just having the right mindset. You know, um, this team is playing well. JB has his team playing really well. You know, right now, we just have the mindset that, you know, we never want to try to lose two games in a row. And um, that's our mindset and our focus. So we just got to come out and, you know, we just got to try to find energy and generate energy however we can. And um, that's up to the coaching staff to try to get guys going and try to find the right combinations to, to supply that energy. And then for you being back in Cleveland, obviously that was the first team that you were a head coach with and now you return as a head coach for the first time um some good memories there a title there what's it like for you to be back in the city and then to be back in the arena um it's great you know get a chance to see all the guys i was here with and um just think about all the memories like you said of just you know some really good times of winning the championship going to four straight finals and um just being able to see the security guys you know the pr people and you know the, the trainers the, you know everybody just came in and said hello so um, it was great to see, you know, so um, it's always fun to come back here. Like, it means a lot. Um, what we did in 2016, um, you know, meant a great deal to this city and to this organization. So it'll always be in my heart. Thank you. Thanks, Jamie. We will go next to Andrew. Ty, hello. Uh, I remember, remember last year when you came back, they put out that photo uh, of you outside the locker room. Did they give you a nice welcome back photo again this year? No, sir. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's only been, you know, two and a half years since your last game with Cleveland. Like, does that feel like forever ago or does it feel it like feels like I didn't even know that. It feels like it was way longer than that. But um, now that you say it, yeah, it's only been two and a half years, but it feels like a long time ago. And then I just, you know, obviously you're, you're a Missouri guy. You, you won some titles in L.A. You bounced around. You played in so many cities like but you have this connection to Cleveland. Do you feel like that's something that even though you're there for four years, a fairly small chunk of time of your life, because of that title, is that something that's going to kind of, do you feel like that connection is going to stay there for the rest of your career? I mean, you would hope so. You know, I think, you know, winning the championship um, with our team, like we did in 2016 and um, the first for the franchise, you know, you would think and hope that when you come back, um, it's always love and support. So, um, you know, like I said, getting older and going forward in my life, you know, we'll see how that, see, see how it turns out. Thanks, Zach. All right, we'll go over next to Law. Hey, Ty, how's everything today? Good. Uh, so, so Jared Dully had a book out, um, a little, little mini book, and I'm just going to get right to the quote. It says- A book? <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Jared Dully? I didn't- I, I didn't even know I had a prime membership, but I, apparently I did. And there was a sentence in there about Paul George saying that, you know, they felt like it was disrespectful that um, he hasn't won and he put himself on the same level of LeBron may be. I'm not going to ask you about how you feel about like Paul specifically, but you know that he's heard a lot of noise this year. How do you kind of talk to him to keep him, keep him focused on the task at hand? Um, I know I probably can't cuss on here, so I won't cuss, but <laughs> who cares? Like, just just be who you are, play your game. Who cares what people say and what the outside people think? You know, we know how we feel about PG, our team, our organization, and that's all that matters. He's having a great season, a great year. He's healthy. Um, he's done a lot of great things for his team. And uh, so that's all we're worried about. And so as far as for me, I really don't care what people say on the outside, and, you know, hopefully PG doesn't either. Thanks. We'll go next to Angel Gray. Hi, Coach. It's good to see you. Um, I'll make sure to speak with somebody about putting a picture next time for when you arrive. We apologize. That's okay. I know what I look like. <laughs> <laughs> coach, you mentioned that um, you respect what Coach JB has been able to do with this group. You said they're playing well, but what stands out to you about um, how well they've been playing? I just think, you know, getting them to trust, you know, understanding who they're playing through, um, you know, with Drummond and, and Colin. And um, the other guys just, you know, filling in the pieces. And he's done a great job of just, you know, telling these guys what he wants and what, what he's looking for. They play hard every single night. Um, at one stretch, they were they were number one in the NBA in defense. Now I think they're still top 10. Um, but he just has those guys trusting and playing hard and competing every single night. 
And you saw Colin while you were a head coach here in his rookie season. Is there any growth that you've seen or what have you seen in his game to this point um, since you uh, were his coach? A couple of things, you know, I think um, from summer league of his first year, you know, um, summer league to when we got to preseason to the six games that I coached, um, his shot got better and better. And um, now, um, you know, he's really shooting the basketball well from mid range and from three. So it really improved that. And also just, you know, reading the pick and roll and making plays and passes, like seeing different plays um, when they're developing. And so he's really taking a, a step forward in that department as well. But um, scoring the basketball was his thing when he came out of college and he's doing it at a high level right now. Thanks. We will go next to Miriam. Hey, Ty. Um, you mentioned all the love and support you feel when you come back to Cleveland and, and seeing the folks. And obviously, you're just there for a quick quick time this time. But has the COVID protocols like kind of kept you from like doing what you normally would do on a return trip to the city? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> it's cold outside. It's snowing. So yeah, it wouldn't be much for me to do. Right on. And then w w any any consideration at all about um, resting Kawhi on the back end of a back-to-back -back or, or are we just full, full speed ahead on that? Yeah, he wants to play. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. We will go next to Tomer. Hey, Ty. Um, any, anyone else sitting out for you guys today or? No, everyone's playing. And then um, I'm wondering, you know, everyone says that when, when you win a championship, there's a special bond um, that goes on for life. I'm curious, is, is there still a bond between, you know, some of the guys like you and, and, and Kevin and Channing and RJ? Do you guys still talk back and forth? Always. And it's funny because it goes further. It goes back further than that. Like, even when I see the old Laker guys like Rick Fox and, you know, Robert Ory and D Fish, like, it's just something that you never lose, you know. And um, when I see Channing and RJ and K-Love and all the guys from that team, it's instant love, you know, because it's something you work so hard to get to and you finally achieve um, a win, achieve the goal of winning the championship together and all the hard work and dedication that it took to get there. And people really don't understand, like, you know, the, the one we won in 2016 was just hard fault and all the things we had to go through that season. And then coming back from three to one, down three one, um, it was just a magical season, a, a magical year. And so that I don't think that bond would ever be broken. You, you ever get tired of uh, RJ and Channing? No, actually, I love Channing, RJ sometimes. <laughs> but <laughs> Channing is the best, man. I just, you know, yeah. But both of them are the best, really. I mean, adding those two guys to our team um, really changed, you know, the outlook of our team, having two veteran guys like that, along with James Jones, who, who were able to tell LeBron the truth and able to tell the young guys the truth. But also, you know, when they weren't playing, they were playing with the young guys, kind of like Pat Pat is today, like, they play with the young guys three on three and four on four um, to keep themselves ready. And they was a really, really big addition to our team. Thanks. Thanks. We'll go next to Chris Fedor. Chris, I hope I got your last name right. It's, it's Fedor. So you are close. It's all right. Hey, Ty, welcome back. Good to see you again, man. Thank you. Um, I know you had a relationship with Colin when he came into the NBA um, that went back to when he was even in college. Based on what you've seen from him early on in his career, in any way, are you surprised at, at the level of growth that he's had in, in such a short time? No, not at all. I mean, because he's a hard worker. You know, um, he's a guy who came from the bottom and, you know, a lot of people didn't know about him coming out of high school. And then his senior year, he just kind of hit the stage and, um, everybody wanted him after a senior year of playing. I think it started in the summer of AAU. And um, they came to the game and see some other guys, and they ended up seeing Colin. And um, he just kind of took off from there. So his senior year, I think he had everybody trying to recruit him and get him there. And that's just kind of that's, – that's the kind of player he is. You know, he's a hard worker. He's determined. And when I was here, we tried to – you know, we had to kick him off the court and kick him out of the gym, you know, because he was doing too much. But that's just the person he is. He's a hard worker. He's dedicated. He wants to be great. And uh, you can see the results from that right now. And Ty, you've mentioned a few times J.B. Bickerstaff. Um, what is it about his approach? What is it about his style that you know about him that you think makes him a good fit for the Cavs? I just think, you know, being young and being to relate to the guys, but also just earning those guys' trust. I think he's, he's a no-nonsense guy. You know, he's going to let you have your fun and enjoy it. But, you know, coming up under his dad, who was a coach, you know, he learned very early. And um, the young guys, they trust him. And 
his teams always compete. They always play hard. They always execute. They always play the right way. And um, he's done the same thing with the Cavs team as well. Thanks, Ty. Yes, sir. Thanks. We'll go next to Justin Russo. Hey, Coach. Good evening. Hope you're doing well. Um, right now, Cleveland ranks in the top three when it comes to transition efficiency, primarily because of how they take advantage of opponents' turnovers. Mm-hmm. And I know you always preach just how important it is to take care of the basketball. But on a night like tonight, which is the second night of a back-to-back, it's at the end of a long road trip. Does limiting turnovers become an even more paramount priority, in your opinion? Yes, it does. I think with the way they offensive rebound and the way they uh, you know accumulate steals, we got to be great in taking care of the basketball. We can't let them get out in early transition, getting easy baskets, like you said, especially on the back-to-back, you know, where you know guys are tired. So we got to make sure we're sharp, taking care of the basketball, and getting good shots. Um, because sometimes bad shots are just like a turn up as well. So we got to have great shot shot quality and make sure we take care of the basketball. Thanks. We have time for just a couple more. We'll go to Marla from the Akron Beacon Journal. Uh, yeah, great to see you. I'm sending you a virtual hug. <laughs> How you doing? Good to see you. I mean, well, I can't see you, but good to hear your voice. Right, right, right. Uh, I'm just, you were, you thought you were going to be the guy, you know, to start this rebuild for the Cavs. So you know where they were. Does that even put in more perspective how far they've come, you know? You know, in re- what relatively short time? Yeah, I mean, I thought, you know, like I said, JV's done a phenomenal job from Houston, you know, to Memphis to here. Like, he's always done a great job. And so it's just good to see him get to a place where um, he's able to stay here for a long time. They respect what he brings to the table. And um, it doesn't surprise me at all because he's done it everywhere he's been. And these young guys are getting better, you know, with Colin and Jetty, um, you know, they're taking a step forward. So um, adding Drummond and adding Allen and guys like that, um, they're going to be a, a really good team. So um, JB has done a phenomenal job, and he's going to continue to do the same thing. Hope your mom and grandma are doing good. Thanks. Yes, they are. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, next to Joseph. Hey, Ty. Uh, is there something the team would like to see from Luke Kennard that goes beyond him just being more aggressive shooting? No, he's been great. Um, I actually had a good conversation with him today. And um, – you know, we just need him to be aggressive and be who he is. Um, that's the bottom line. 